What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In the last video, we camped down on some BLM land in Quartzsite, Arizona. We drove through the desert, saw a few things, and just enjoyed the beauty of boondocking. In this video, we're heading to Sin City, Las Vegas. Welcome to fabulous Las Vegas. Las Vegas is a city located in the state of Nevada in the United States. It is known for its vibrant nightlife, casinos, entertainment, and luxurious resorts. Las Vegas has a rich and fascinating history dating back thousands of years to when the area was inhabited by Native American tribes such as the Paiutes. In the 1800s, the area that is now Las Vegas was part of the Spanish Empire and later became part of Mexico. In 1855, a group of Mormon settlers established a fort in the area to protect their water rights and to provide a rest stop for travelers on the Mormon Road, now called the Old Spanish Trail. In the early 1900s, the railroad arrived, which brought more people and commerce to the area. The city's first hotel, the Hotel Nevada, now the Golden Gate Hotel and Casino, opened its doors in 1906. However, Nevada banned gambling in 1910. Although it was still done illegally, and 20 years later legalized it again and the first legal casino, the Northern Club, opened in 1931. Throughout the 1940s, the city experienced a boom in construction and development as several large hotels and casinos were built, including the Flamingo, the Sands, and the Desert Inn. These properties were owned by notorious mobsters such as Bugsy Siegel and Meyer Lansky who helped turn Las Vegas into the center of gambling and entertainment. We parked the RV at the only Thousand Trails campground in Vegas, which was only 20 minutes from the Strip. I didn't take much footage of the campground because as soon as we got there, I left for the Strip. Las Vegas Boulevard I walked around the entire Strip while I was here, and let me tell you, it is a lot of walking. Don't take that lightly. It's a lot of walking. Although the strip itself spans a little over four miles, some of these casinos and hotels are huge. I tried to walk into and check out as many hotels and casinos as I could while I was here. I stayed on the strip for a few nights and got a room at the Horseshoe with a view of the Bellagio. It was a nice hotel with a western theme and priced at $145 per night. The Horseshoe is located center of the Strip alongside Flamingo, Paris, and Bally's and across the street from Caesars Palace and Bellagio. The Las Vegas monorail is seemingly the best way to travel around the Strip. $15 for 24 hours unlimited access or $5 for each ride. It was definitely the best way to see the strip since the track is high above the road 
and frequent seven stops from the Sahara to the MGM Grand every nine minutes. It's also worth mentioning the monorail is completely automated, meaning there is no driver. The first night on the strip, I checked out the northern part of the strip. On the north side were hotels and casinos such as the Sahara, which holds a Middle Eastern theme. The Strat, which has a World's Fair theme. and Circus Circus used a circus theme. I decided to check out Circus Circus and wanted to play their old school Magnificent Seven slot machines. One dollar per token and three dollars per spin. I was up a little over one hundred dollars at one point, but didn't walk away and eventually lost it all. Which was fine because I had fun and didn't necessarily think I was going to hit a jackpot or anything. But hey, you never know. After Circus Circus, I headed back to the Horseshoe and enjoyed a little bit of the casino there before heading to bed. The next morning, I decided to check out the center of the strip where there are several major resorts and attractions such as Caesar's Palace, Flamingo, and Bellagio, featuring its iconic fountain shows. I went across the street to the famous Bellagio Hotel for their brunch buffet, costing about $45 plus tip. This buffet had quite a large spread of various items and the service was outstanding. The food was excellent. <laughs> the Bellagio is an Italian themed resort and its five star luxury is one of the most well known and elegant on the strip. They are also known for their breathtaking fountain shows displayed in front of the hotel on their lake. Next to the Bellagio is Caesar's Palace, which is another well-known five-star resort with a Roman Empire theme and a huge casino. The happy RVers stayed a night on the strip and had the opportunity to book this suite for the night at Caesars Palace as an upgrade. Cost for them was about $300 for the night, but this suite typically costs around $3,000 per night. Apparently the actor Ray Romano from the TV series, Everyone Loves Raymond, books this suite whenever he is here in Las Vegas. This room was just about the size of a house with two floors, two bedrooms, two and a half bathrooms, a kitchen, a huge living area, and a gigantic window with awesome views of the strip. After roaming around the center of the strip most of the day, I ventured towards the south end of the strip, towards the Welcome to Fabulous Las Vegas sign. Hotels around here include Mandalay Bay, Luxor, an Egyptian theme, New York, New York, which is New York City themed, and MGM Grand, which is an Art Deco Hollywood theme. The Luxor 
shaped like a pyramid, has a beam of light coming out from the top of the hotel that can apparently be seen from space. New York, New York is an awesome hotel which is made to resemble New York City such as the city skyline, Times Square, and Greenwich Street. I went to a Terry Fader show while I was here. Terry Fader is a talented ventriloquist seen on America's Got Talent. He has several characters he uses and is pretty funny. Great show to see. MGM Grand featured an Art Deco Hollywood theme and was the last stop of the monorail. I visited this place a few times while in Las Vegas because of its casino. Of all the casinos I have seen, I like this one the most. Maybe it's just because I won more money here than other casinos. Anyway, I also went to a David Copperfield show while I was here because seeing him on TV for years made it look like fun to see in person. Well, I was wrong. The experience wasn't quite what I had expected and it was disappointing. We weren't able to film anything, which was fine, but it wasn't until the show started that I realized how fake the act looked. From the random chosen people in the crowd to mysteriously and magically making things appear, which was just his staff moving items into place, all while other staff members kept shining flashlights in the crowd's eyes to help blind them from seeing what was happening behind the scenes. Eh, uh, I digress. Las Vegas is a must-visit destination for anyone traveling to the area and is certainly unlike anything I have ever seen. The neon lights, the towering hotels, and the atmosphere is just incredible to experience. I'll definitely be back. I certainly had some kind of Vegas fever. Thanks for watching. Drop your thoughts and comments down below. Thanks for all the love and support. See you next time. Going for a car ride.